Hey friends, in my daily teaching video today, we're going to continue our 12 part series all on the theme of freedom. God wants you to live completely and utterly free. Part of the reason Jesus died was to set us free, free from ourselves, free from sin, free from, but also free to. And today we're going to be exploring freedom from lack, how God wants us to live I don't believe necessarily rich, but he wants us to live completely free from lack. I'm going to share a bit about my testimony in this and give you some principles, three or four rules, which will help you live this out in your life. Really important thing. Let me do a few practicals before we do that. Number one, if you're on my YouTube channel, I really encourage you to hit the YouTube subscribe button in that corner, the red button. And secondly, just hit the bell symbol and press all. That way YouTube will inform you about future videos. Uh, secondly, do check out all the links below. We actually have all 12 of the teachings and this series about freedom available as a package, as a download. All 12 videos, the audios, and also my personal teaching notes available as a download uh, for the gift of $20 to our ministry that goes to our missions department. So consider uh, hitting that link below and doing that. Do check out our churches in New England, Sturbridge, Otis, and Norwalk, Connecticut. Uh, my traveling itinerant work, our online ministry school, missions, and so much more. Good. So let's talk about freedom. Um, freedom from the fear of lack, but actually freedom from lack as well. You know, one of the primary things that came in through the curse, if you think about it, in the garden, the ground is cursed. Part of the curse that came upon Adam was you'll earn your living by the sweat of your brow. God actually put man and mankind male and female, Adam and Eve, in a garden where everything they needed was there for them. It wasn't like they had to go looking for things or, you know, sweating. Oh, I wonder if there'll be enough fruit on the trees. Everything they needed, all things that pertain to life and godliness, were provided for them in that garden. And part of the curse is they were thrown out from that garden. And, you know, they would work. I believe God wanted Adam to work in the garden, but he wanted to work for God, to work with God, to work as the master in the garden, not as a slave. And I think one of the effects of the curse, and it's a very real effect in our life, is, the, is lack or the fear of lack. And it is intrinsic in all of us. Really, if you think about it, Wall Street, I'm a, I trade stock on you know, Wall Street several days a week, do things like that, love investing financially. And yet, if you think about it, Wall Street or all of the markets like that, they work by two conflicting principles, fear and greed. Everybody wants more, greed. Nobody wants to lose what they have, fear. And every stock really uh, sort of vacillates, moves between um, support and resistance that are all really about fear and greed. And I believe God wants to set us free from fear and God wants to set us free from greed. And I believe he wants to us to live our lives. Really, you know, we see this with our children. How would you wish to live your children? How would you wish to lead your children to help your children grow? I think most of us, if we're honest, would say, I would want my children to grow free from any sense of lack or fear of lack. Not be worrying every day, like, will there be food on the table? Will there be gifts for Christmas? Will we have, be able to pay the light bill and keep the heating on during the winter? I think we'd want our children free from any sense of lack. I think we'd want them to appreciate the things they have, to value them, not to leave those lights on. I could pay my light bill for the rest of my life right now, but I get rightly offended if my kids forget to switch the light off and leave it on all night long and I come back and there's some light bulb burning away. It's not about how much it costs me, it's just that's an inappropriate use of resource. I want them to appreciate what they have. I want them to feel blessed and to be not spoiled, but at times just have amazing things to go on vacations, to, to you know, go out and eat as a family, to do the things that somebody without resource maybe couldn't do. I want them to learn to work and realize that God, that work is not a dirty word. Work is not a four-letter word, I like to say. That, that work has its own value even apart from the resource it brings into our lives. Let him who stole steal no more. Rather, let him work with his hands. That is good. Why? That he may have to give to him who has not. Ephesians 4. So, and lastly, I don't want them to be spoiled. I don't want them to be greedy. I don't want them to be entitled. I don't want them to feel 
the world owes them anything or their parents owe them anything. I want them to be appreciative of what they have and enjoy it, not feel guilty or ashamed, but also not feel, yeah, enabled, not feel um, entitled in that way and not feel spoiled and just feel superior. Now, God wants you and I to walk in all five of those realities. He wants us free from any sense of lack. He wants us to be blessed. He wants us to, you know, appreciate and value and be thankful for the things he have. He wants us free from that sense of fear. Uh, he wants us to feel blessed without feeling like that we're better than anybody else or that we've earned or deserved this. And he wants us to be mature sons and daughters in the way in which we interact with this world. It's really important that we get that. Let me give you a few principles that will really help with this. You know, it's interesting. God called me to live my faith really when I was a teenager. And I ran away from that for a season, came back to it in my kind of mid to late 20s. And um, it's interesting in that in between time when I, I was sort of ran away from God. I was in a church and I got burnt out in ministry. The church, not a church I was leading, but the church I was in had a big split. And I got, you know, hurt and disappointed and all those things. And I just walked away. And uh, not, not, that wasn't a good thing, but it was my testimony. I went to live in France. And it's funny, being, I went to live in France when I was 22 and I didn't know one person in France and didn't know one word of French. I probably knew two or three words. And I, I built a life, a good life for myself in France, but I also, I, I don't say I struggled, it was good. I, I learned the value of work. I learned what it was like to be in a city and be running out of money. I went knocking on doors, finding a job. I eventually found a restaurant owner and he's like, I don't need you. And I said, well, I can, I can wait on tables and wash dishes. I'll do two jobs. In the end, he's like, okay, that's good. If I can pay you once and get you to do two rolls, fine. You know, three months later, I'm the manager of the restaurant because he realized like I would put my mind to it and I had some wisdom I got from the Bible and different things like that. And I, it's the point, I learned self-sufficiency. And I was there alone in France and I really didn't want help from anybody. I didn't get any money from the government, from my parents. And I learned that if I didn't provide, it wouldn't come. I was nearly homeless once in France and I literally, you know, worked my butt off. There was a time I would play guitar in the, the underground and learned I could make money that way. And I, it, it, there's many good things I learned there, but I became self-sufficient. And I probably had a pride about that, that if I didn't, I learned that I could pay my rent on a good apartment. I could make a life for myself relying on nobody. Now, a lot of young people could do with learning that lesson. My problem is that became, I was leaning and relying on myself. And then God called me to live by faith. And he was saying, lean on me, lean upon my promises, lean upon my word, lean not on your own understanding. Don't become self-sufficient, rely on me. And I had a struggle to let go of self-sufficiency and step into God's sufficiency. And I think many people are doing that. I think many of us are aversion of a self-made man or self-made woman in a way. And God says like, I love you, but I don't want you to be that way. I want you to be my child. And I had to come and I, I've probably been on a journey, I'm sure it's not finished yet, of learning to live by faith. I had to learn to be blessed. And it's interesting, I had this lack and this poverty mentality in me for years. It's interesting, the Kind of at the time of recording, I will be preaching in Belgium next week. And uh, I used to live in the south of France and I'd drive up to Belgium two or three times a year. I'd always, I would never pay the highways in France because they cost, you know, maybe about $100 to get there. So I'd, I'd go on the smaller roads. It would take twice as long, use more gas. And um, I had a poverty mentality around so much of what I did. And the Lord really had to set me free from that and bring me into a place, not of being rich, but of leaning upon him and learning I could trust him. God, the Lord had to teach me how to get out of debt and how to get out of debt through wisdom, but also supernaturally how to get out of debt. The church I'm leading here, the building I'm in right now, we were in debt for about 30 years. And two or three years ago, the Lord spoke to me and said, I want this church out of debt. It won't go into its future when it's carrying behind it the debts of the past. And we, we went on a journey as a church for about 18 months, a faith journey, never asked anybody for a penny, but by faith we declare every week, this church is debt free. And I can't even tell you how God did it, but boom, 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 all the debt's gone and this church is completely debt free. As soon as I did that, the Lord said, right, Graham, I want you debt free. Now my wife and I own a home in France and one here in America. 
and uh, you know, not some palace, but a good five-person home, you know, with offices and different things in it. And the Lord just did the same thing for us and completely cancelled all of our debts. And I believe God wants you free from the from lack, free from the fear of lack free from debt, and most importantly, free to serve him. There are so many people who can't go onto the mission field. God tells them to go somewhere and they can't do it because they're paying off. They're working today to pay off maybe credit card bills, you know, that they ran yesterday, so to speak. And how do we get free? I mean, number one, I'll give you four or five quick keys. Number one, you've got to actually step into an identity as a free person. I am a free person, and forgive me if I'm expressing this badly in in grammar, but I am a supplied person. I live, my testimony is my God supplies all my needs. And years ago, I used to to function this way. I would get a need and I'd go and by faith and ask God to meet the need. I'd pray and believe it was net and I'd kind of go through this faith battle. Oh God, believing, believing, believing. And then the money would come in and I'd go, oh great. I'd relax for about three or four days. And then another bill would come or another need. Okay, here we go again. And I lived from need to supply, need to supply, need to supply. And the Lord showed me one day, Graham, you're, you're asking me to supply your specific needs and I'm doing it. But he said, I want you to look at yourself as somebody who lives in the now of my supply, somebody who has no needs. And I actually began everywhere I go telling people I have no needs. And it wasn't, didn't work out that great because people stopped giving me money. I have no needs. This church has no needs. Now, I wasn't saying there aren't bills coming in, there aren't things to do. I don't even relate to the needs. I relate to God as my provider. And there's an identity shift. You can step today out of lack and need. Even if you still have bills, if you still have obligations, you still have things that, those are not the point. The point is there's an identity in Christ as one whose needs are completely met and sustained. And number one, step into that. Number two, become a giver. I believe we should all tithe to our local church. And tithe isn't some vague, be led by the spirit thing. It's giving 10% of your, your gross, your original income. If you earn $1,000 a month, give $100 to your church. You know, that's a biblical principle. It's, it's somebody, a person who doesn't know the Bible might say that's under the law. Well, it was before the law, during the law, after the law. It says in the book of Hebrews that in the old covenant, the, the Jewish people would, would submit, would deliver their tithe to the priest. In the new covenant, we give our tithe to Jesus. Yeah? You know, breathing was under the law, but breathing was before the law. Breathing was after the law. We will breathe until we will have glorified bodies. I'm not sure about after that. but uh, So I would be tithing. I would be then led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit starts when you start tithing. I'd be led by the Spirit in the way in which we give, the places in which we give. That's the place to give, to give to missions, give to different ministries, to give to the poor, to give that the gospel would go forth to the world, to different things like that. So number one, there's an identity as a person living in God's supply. Number two, there is a, how can I call that? Uh, A place of giving, of new covenant giving we've got to step into. Number three, there is a place of authority we've got to take. And we've actually got to the world in which we live is constantly bombarding us with fear. There's going to be a crisis, a famine, a recession, all these things. At times, we've actually got to bring the lordship of Jesus into our finance, into our supply, into how we look at the future. We've got to make Jesus the lord of these things and submit it all to his lordship. And at times just shut off some of the news, shut off some of the uh, influences that come in around you. You know, it's an interesting thing. I'll just use that as, as an example. In 2020, when the COVID thing hit, at least here in America, um, you know, literally in about one week in America, the stock market just crashed. And uh, most stocks, and I had a, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in stock at the time. It, I mean, it really crashed and it went down by... I want to say about 30%, something like that. And, um, you know, it's not nice when you look at your investments, see different things that are worth a third less, you know, in one week than they used to be in this fear everywhere. Everybody's trying to buy toilet paper. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was praying about it at the time and the Lord said, Graham, don't sell anything. Buy, 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 buy. 
and I actually took everything I had and bought things when those prices were low. Do you know about two months later, it went all the way back up and went even higher. I actually paid off one of my houses right then. <laughs> paid it off, paid off a mortgage and had only for about four years, finished the whole thing off. Why? I tapped into the wisdom of God. And here's really what, what, what I want you to catch. Key number four is God's got wisdom in how we do things. He knows about the seven years of plenty and the seven years of famine. He knows how to navigate these things. And if we'll make him Lord and submit to his lordship, become a giver, become a tither, become one who, who's generous in the way we do things. If we'll bring his lordship and authority into Burr, where he becomes the Lord, our supplier. Many people know Jesus as Savior, and he really is a Savior, but they don't know him as healer, or they don't know him as the supplier of all things. If we'll bring under authority, and lastly, we'll tap into the wisdom of God, what should we do? And I believe there's both this human wisdom we can learn, this kind of book of Proverbs wisdom, there's, you know, as it were, Dave Ramsey wisdom, but God also has specific wisdom in circumstances, in ways he wants you to do things. And I believe if you'll ask, James 1, ask in faith, you'll receive the wisdom you need for your finances. And you can live, like I do, free from lack. Doesn't mean challenges won't hit you. Living in health doesn't mean sickness won't attack you at times. It means you stop trying to get heel sick, heel sick, heel sick, and you move into a standing of health. And you can move into a standing, a place of freedom with your finances that makes you a blessed to be a blessing person in Jesus' name. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that subscribe button down there. Give the bell symbol a press and hit all. And uh, do check out the links below this video. I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to be talking tomorrow about freedom from legalism, religion, and bondage. Really great teaching. And uh, look forward to seeing you then. Bye for now.